Hallelujah. Well, we welcome you to the CLMI Apostolic Media Church. Amen. Here we are, we're live today in uh, Ifield Community Centre on our fifth anniversary. Hallelujah. <laughs> fifth anniversary, <laughs> praise be to God. And um, we started off in, was it, um, what's the all? Montrose Avenue. Montrose Avenue. Montrose Avenue. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, you was on a video this morning from there. Was I real? I'll send it you after. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You were commenting after the first service. Was I real? Yeah, I'll send it you after. <laughs> so we started off in Montrose and then they didn't want us there, so they made lives up and we had to move from there. <laughs> you went to Marsh Mar Green, haven't you? Then we went to Marsh Green and the youth got us shut down for pulling a radiator off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Good kids then, Good bro. kids then were. <laughs> I was away one night in Cumbria preaching and the radiator. <laughs> got a phone call, you're not using this building again. <laughs> and then from Montrose we went to Nollyall which was a really blessed time. Since the youth came in over a period of time off the streets and everything, we shared the gospel with them week by week. It was awesome there. But then we had to shut that down because we was breaking the law. We didn't have enough workers per teenager, so we had to shut that down. And then we came here. But um, the Lord is moving on me again, and I think we might be opening that up again on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. Uh, that if we get enough workers. So as I've said to the Lord, as soon as we have enough workers, we're going to open Norley all up again to reach the youth there again. So that'll be up and coming when the Lord sends the workers. So if you want to work with youth and you're watching this, you're not involved in the church anywhere, contact me. And we can build a team to reach the youth there in Nolly Hall. Uh, they're a lovely group of kids, well behaved. Uh, <laughs> they're well behaved. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you want to be involved with youth ministry, come along and uh, get in touch with me. Uh, because God wants to use you and to reach the youth out there. Even if it's, you're just making tea and coffee for them. You know, you might not be good at speaking or nothing, but well, join the club. <laughs> join the club. Um, and if you want to be involved with that, get in touch with me. Uh, and then we'll open that up again in Norley Avenue. Uh, so the building is free at the moment, so this is why I'm thinking about it and praying about it. So uh, let me know if you want to be involved with that. Praise God. We run it. We don't really run it as a church, though. It's just an outreach. We just preach the gospel. We have some praise and worship, but it's just the gospel every week there. Have you been in touch with Keith and Brad? No, but I am going to do. I'll, I'll contact Keith and Brad as well. You know, so praise God. So we welcome you wherever you are, <laughs> wherever you're watching. It looks like you're contacting Keith and Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send him a message. <laughs> <laughs> so, so on the fifth anniversary, I thought, I said, Lord, what should we speak on the fifth anniversary? And this is the one. So praise God. Um, so Father, we thank you for every person who's going to be watching this, wherever they are. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you will greatly encourage them with your word and, and, and empower them with your Holy Spirit for each person who's going to be watching this. May they be drawn closer to you, Lord God. May their hearts and minds and eyes be fixed on you. And I pray, Lord, that they will grow in their faith and in the love of you, that they grow in a deeper relationship with you, Heavenly Father. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So Ephesians 5, and I was on this at one of the midnight devotions a few weeks ago. Uh, Ephesians 5, verse 9 and 10, and it says, Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So it calls us there, it challenges us to live 
this Christ life. Because how many know that what I've just read there, it it describes Christ. Yeah. That is Christ. And we've all been called to live. Um, for the fruit of life consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So that's the new life we're called to live. We, how many know we're not called to live in the old life? We're called to live in the new life. Amen. I was in Windermere on Friday, and coming home, I was in the Jag, <laughs> driving, driving. <laughs> and we was in this traffic, there was a big Range Rover in front of me, big tow bar, Next thing, he starts to reverse, and I thought, this guy's not going to stop. <laughs> Next thing, crunch, he reversed straight in me. So what did I do? I got out of the car, he got out of the car, I gave him, I knocked him <laughs> to the ground, knocked him out, and I said, you won't do that again, will <laughs> And he said, I love you in the morning. <laughs> Now, the old man would have done that, <laughs> but the new man, he gets it, he said, I didn't see it, I didn't see it. I went, remember this, it's Good Friday, Jesus loves you, get in your car and go. Oh, <laughs> and he, dro he drove off like it. <laughs> and he checks to see it. <laughs> so we've opened the phone for the <laughs> <Could've been drunk laughs> <about it. laughs> How many old the old man would have risen up, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Risen up, but yeah. how many old we got to the new life? <laughs> and then it says, and find out what pleases the Lord. The Apostle Paul told his church, how many know it was his church, uh, the book of Ephesians, he planted the church there and he sent this letter to the church to encourage them. And he tells his congregation, find out what pleases the Lord. And come back next week and tell me. <laughs> and notice, that's all he said. He didn't tell them. He said, you find out what pleases the Lord, he said. So he left it with them. And so what are we going to do this morning? We're going to find Amen. out what pleases the Lord. Amen. And how many know we're called to find out Amen. what pleases the Lord? Not what pleases your pastor. Amen. Not what pleases your apostle. Amen. Not what pleases your evangelist. <laughs> not what pleases the Pope. Because yeah. <laughs> he's a dope. <laughs> and he gets soap on a rope for Christmas. Don't be a <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine. It, all that matters. What pleases the Lord? Amen. If Amen. you're living to please your leaders uh, or anyone else, forget it. Amen. You're losing. You're, you're missing the mark. It's about pleasing God. Amen. Pleasing God. Amen. If you please God and upset your pastor, don't worry about Amen. it. <laughs> don't worry about it. And, and, and don't give to please your pastor. Amen. That's why in every, every church I've ever been in, I've always given in secret. Amen. You say, I fill your name, are you no, no, no. This is between me and the law of this. This is from yeah. my book. Yeah. <laughs> so I just do it by Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the first no lesson. Stop pleasing others and Amen. please God. Just please, make, make that your main focus. Praise pleasing God, God. pleasing Praise God. Because they'll get over it. If you upset them, they'll get over yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So please God, find yeah. out what pleases the Lord. We, we see in 1 Kings 3 verse 10 um, that God came to Solomon and he said to Solomon, ask me for anything you want. Fancy God coming to you today and saying, uh, Gareth, David, Lorraine, Dev, ask me of anything you want. What would her reply be? Oh, I've got this here. Uh, don't mind a Bentley, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> <Motor> Lord. <laughs> I need a, a new 50,000 chandelier, Lord. <laughs> I need somebody to come down and do rendering. <laughs> Seriously, what would we ask the Lord? If, if, if God said, ask me anything, mm -hmm. what would our response be? It'd be awesome, that Amen. wouldn't it? It'd be absolutely awesome. Amen. And we all have our answers. The Lord knows what we would ask for. And what did Solomon ask for? And God, so God said to Solomon, ask me anything, Solomon. Anything you want. 
and he said, uh, well, I ask for wisdom, Lord, Amen. to rule this Amen. unruly lot. <laughs> you given me. And he said, ask for wisdom. And when Solomon said that to God, it says God was pleased Amen. with what he asked for. Someone just nicked my car. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> What's he talking about? <laughs> God was pleased. He was pleased. He said, well, he didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for honour. So do you know what? I'm going to give you them as well. Amen. You know, so God gave him what he didn't ask for. Amen. Because uh, it was God was pleased with what he asked him. He asked for wisdom. And how many know God said, right, do you know what? Most people would have asked me for riches. Amen. Most people would have asked me for honour and fame and be famous in the world, but you asked me for wisdom. So do you know what? I'm going to give you both. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise how God. awesome is that? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so God blessed him. He became the richest man on the planet Wonderful. in his days. Wonderful. Richer than Bill Gates <laughs> and all things. <laughs> but uh, sad to say, further down the line, he lost the plot. <laughs> he took his eyes off God right. and he ended up losing the plot. 700 wives, 300 concubines. <laughs> and he lost the plot. Uh, but it pleased God what he asked Amen. for. And, and then it says in uh, Genesis 5, verse 21, it says, Enoch walked with God 300 years. And then he was no more because God took him away. Mm -hmm. He walked with God. He started to walk with God, I think, halfway through his life. And he started to walk with God. And then God loved him so much that he <laughs> said, you're not staying here, you're coming up with me. And he took him. He took him. And he didn't experience death, it says. In um, Hebrews 5, uh, Hebrews 11, <clears throat> Hebrews 11, uh, verse 5, it says, By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He was walking along one day. Suddenly, he was in heaven. Glory be to God. Amen. Fancy that. Fancy <laughs> God kept me. Oh, goodness me, I'm walking the streets of gold. Hallelujah. <laughs> Play me golden guitar. <laughs> 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 and he took him he didn't experience death now the bible says it's been appointed once for man to die and then judgment that's so right. guess what he will have to fulfill scripture that's right. he'll be, he'll, in the last days Enoch and is it Elijah, Elijah yeah. they, and Elijah didn't experience death as well that's he right. was taken up but these two will be the two prophets that's right. in Jerusalem. It's got to keep your eyes on Sky yeah. TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they'll be here in Jerusalem <laughs> and they'll kill him. Yeah. And but then God raises them up from the dead. Oh, yeah. bit of God. So that will have, they will have because scripture says man's a point, so they have to fulfill scripture. Right. Can't go beyond scripture. So they will have to come down, experience death. Then God raise it up. So keep your eyes. Hallelujah. Live. He's not going to lie to me. We face myself. He said, he could not be found. Everyone was saying, well, where's he not? Where is it? Where's he not gone? I mean, is it wouldn't have been. <laughs> Can't find him, are we? Right, screw you. It said, it says because God had taken him away, and I love this bit. I love this bit. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. The King James says. He had this testimony. Amen. And Enoch's testimony was that he pleased God. I don't know about you, but I would love to have that on my tombstone. Amen. That death pleased God. 
you know, it'd be great to have that, wouldn't it? It'd be great to have that. Amen. Enoch's testimony is that he pleased God. So how did Enoch please God? That shows us that he was a man full of faith. He was a man full of faith. Amen. He says, he says, and he pleased God. And without faith, it says, it is impossible Amen. to please God. Wonderful. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he is and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Wonderful. So if we want rewards from God, just earnestly seek him. Earnestly seek him. Early will I seek you, Lord. Amen. You know, it says early Amen. will I seek you. And uh, we have a quick advertisement here. You can't get any earlier than the midnight dimension. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first minute of every day. So we welcome you to join. It's starting again tonight. The Midnight Devotion. Uh, early will I seek you, Lord, it says. And he will reward you for that. It says, so he pleased God. So we see that Enoch was a man full of faith. Because it tells us it's impossible to please God. The only thing that pleases God mainly and firstly is faith. Faith. Yeah. Other things pleases God, like we've just seen in Solomon. It pleased God that Solomon asked for wisdom. So he wants us, me and you, to be living that life of faith. Verse 7, by faith Noah, when warned about the things not seen, in holy fear, it says he built an ark to save his family. He probably never built an ark in his life. But in holy fear, God enabled him, equipped him, gave him the skills to build an ark. By faith, there were a drop of rain in sight. Ever, he was the laughing stock of his town. Yes. But look at this idiot. What's he building this for? Like? <laughs> and he would shave his beard and instantly grow back again. Heaven <laughs> 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 Almighty. He would shave his instantly. <laughs> but he built it by his faith. He condemned the world. Look at that one. By Noah's faith, he condemned the world. Why? Because he was being obedient to God. God said, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this lot. That's right. That I, 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 uh, it grieves me that I made them in the first place, God That's said. Right. Because they were far from God. They were wicked. And he said, his faith condemned the world and became her of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he called to go to a place, he later received and his inheritance obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. He just went by faith. And he goes on, and uh, <clears throat> Hebrews 11 is called the book of faith, Amen. isn't it? The book of, read that in the old time if you get a chance. It builds you up. Everything was by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. And that's what God is looking. When Jesus comes back, he says, will I find faith on the earth, yeah. on the earth when the Son of Man comes? Mm. Will I find faith? Mm. God is always looking for faith. And if you and I live by faith every day, we will be pleasing That's to right. God. We'll be pleasing to God. That's mm. all we need to do. Mm. Just live a life of faith. Wonderful, bro. So often we cannot see it, we can't see the result, but we're living by faith. You say, Lord, I'm believing by faith. Wonderful. I'm trusting you by faith, isn't it? Amen. And that's when we know we're in faith. We know, I've always said, always get a vision from God that is bigger than you. Wonderful. Always get a vision what you, there's no way you in your own ability can make that vision, a dream, come to being. Wonderful. I always have a, a vision from God that is far bigger than you. Why? Because we have a big God. We do. We have a big Amen. God. We have a small Praise message. God. Amen. Amen. So always have a big vision. Have a big faith. Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> it says, and we see, we read of Enoch in the book of Jude. Uh, he mentions Enoch there. And Enoch saw the second coming of Christ. Right. He saw, in, in Jude 1, verse 14, he saw the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the judgment on all the ungodly. Enoch saw the end. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And it said, uh, Genesis 6, verse 8, Noah, and we just mentioned him, it says, Noah found grace, found favour 
in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man, it says, verse 9, blameless among his people. And he walked with God. That's what it tells of Noah. That describes what type of guy he was. He was a man. He said God declared him blameless. Why? Because God's grace and favour was resting Amen. upon Noah. Amen. And because his grace and favour was resting upon him, he walked with God. And God declared him righteous. Why? Because Noah was just like Enoch. He was living a life of faith. Amen. God told him to do something. He did it. Abram told uh, God told Abram to do something. He did it. He didn't question God. He said, how the heck is this going to happen? He, they just believed God. And they were declared righteous. And he walked with God. Noah did everything that God commanded him. In Genesis 17, <clears throat> uh, God said to Abram, walk before me and be blameless. And Abram obeyed God. God told Abram to sacrifice his son Isaac. And you know what? He was going to do it. Why? Because Abram had that much faith, it tells in Hebrews 11, that he believed even if he killed his son, God was going to raise him from the dead there, right there and then. That's what it tells us. He had faith that if he went ahead with it, God would raise it. He did. And a shadow of a doubt, God would raise him from the dead Amen. because he obeyed God. Amen. But uh, we know the story, God provided a sacrifice. That's right. Praise be to God. Job 1, it tells us that he was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. And what happened to Job? Job, the devil came, didn't he, before God. Uh, he only follows you and walks you because you blessed him so right. Satan came in the ascent in the presence of God and God said, Who's like you in here? That's right. Peter, uh, you fired. <laughs> <laughs> what have you learned in here? You was on guard, you don't you? you can't be following Satan. <laughs> and, Abraham, and Satan came before God with his lying tongue again, That's his right. accusation tongue. That's right. And he said, Oh, he only he, he only walks with you because you blessed That's him so true. much. He said, okay, and then God gave him permission. And that's a lesson for us. Satan can only touch us when God gives him permission. That's right. You know, if we're walking with God, mm -hmm. just like Job were, the devil can only touch you if he gets God's permission. That's right. He has to go to God first and get his permission. Mm -hmm. So we knew, we knew what happened to Job. Everything, what he lost everything, but he fell on the ground. And worship God. Amen. Every time a bad report came, he fell on the ground. Amen. So that teaches us when everything is going wrong, when everyone is against you, when everything is coming from you in all directions, when everything is going wrong, what do we do? We keep on praising. Amen. We keep on worshiping. Amen. We keep on the word of God. Amen. We keep going. Even if the whole world is against you. Amen. Yeah. Keep going. Amen. And we keep our eyes on God. Hallelujah. Because God will give us the victory. Hallelujah. In due time. We might be saying, Hurry much more, Lord. <laughs> keep going, son. Keep going. Keep going. Hallelujah. Keep going. <laughs> We've got to keep on going. Amen. So when the storms come, we keep on going. Amen. We may be rocked about. We may be in heaps of tears. We may be heartbroken. We may say, God, how am I going to get out of this? But God comes every time and He lifts us. Amen. He lifts us. He restores us. Amen. When we get it wrong, He restores us. Amen. Praise be to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise bro. God. I was watching a sermon the other day, this um, guy in America. And he went through a major divorce in his church. He was the pastor of the church. Went through a public divorce. And he said, isn't it funny? If a lawyer gets divorced, he keeps on doing his job, lawyer. Right. If a surgeon gets divorced, he keeps on doing a surgeon. Right. If a pastor gets divorced, the church kicks him <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. He said, you're banned. That's right. you know, and the you're church was for the healing thing. Yeah. And I thought, wow, he's so right on the ball, this guy. Like, it was amazing, wonderful sermon. Um, I don't know how I go on that subject, by the way, but, but praise God. And then it says, King David, in 1 Chronicles 29, verse 17, 
He says, I know my God that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. So that shows us that God is pleased with integrity. Amen. He Amen. wants us to be full of integrity in all our ways and in all our doings. God was pleased with Jesus at his baptism. Matthew 3 verse 17. And God shouts from heaven, this is my son whom I love and with him I am well pleased. Amen. You know, why did God say that? He was pleased with him already, but he knew that Jesus was going to do what he called him to do. He had a, a job to do here on earth, and God says, with you, I am well pleased. Amen. Jesus said, I always do what pleases him. That's what Jesus said, John 8, verse 29. I always do. See, Jesus' mission was just to do what the Father had sent him to do. He said, I, I don't do anything in my own strength. The words that I speak are not my own. It's all from the Father. And he always gave glory to the Father. Amen. Everything, in every, he gave glory to the Father. Wonderful. I do everything what pleases him. Hallelujah. Proverbs 15, verse 8, it says, The prayer of the upright pleases him. Who are the upright? Yeah. You and me. Amen. You and me, not the poor. That's right. <laughs> you and me. Every believer in Christ, uh, the upright. Wonderful. And it says the prayers, so every time we pray, wherever we are, if we're on our own, in public, wherever, God is pleased right. with the prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And how many know the prayer of a righteous man availeth much, accomplishes much, Wonderful. it tells us. Hallelujah. We're not praying to thin her, we're praying to Almighty God. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It says, Hebrews 13, verse 16, it says, Do good and share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. How many know God sees us when we're doing good, when we're knocking people out for reversing into jack? <laughs> God sees it and it's pleased. It's pleased. It's pleased. When he says, love your enemies. When, when your enemies, when you smash his tires and his, his, his wheels and everything, God's pleased. <laughs> He's pleased when he sees you. He said, bless your enemies. Bless those who do harm to you, he says. They can't work it out. They can't be scratching their head. So why has he been to... He says it caused heaps of cold oh, on their head, doesn't it? And he said, why are you being good to me when I've done all this? What, what what planet are you on? I'm on the planet of the Holy Hallelujah. Spirit. <laughs> they can't work it out. Right. Um, oh, he's a good one for kids. Colossians 3 verse 20. <laughs> Children, obey your parents in everything. For this pleases the Lord. It pleases the Lord. 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 and 3. He says, uh, request prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all kings and all in authority that we may live peaceable and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness guess what this pleases god who wants all say to be saved amen say all. again say again all it says you sure it's all <laughs> the holy spirit spirit written all. <laughs> Hang on a minute, what does the book say? <laughs> uh, so, read that scripture. What does it say, brother? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's get on the screen. Spurgeon didn't oh. say that. He said elect. Well, ah. they, they have to repent. Oh, <laughs> the Bible says that. Oh. <laughs> it says Proverbs 15, <laughs> verse 26. And that's another one. It says, thanksgiving and prayers. See, God wants his people to be praying for all kings and all in authority. Why? Because most of them are far from God. Amen. That's why they need us praying for them. Praying that they'll come into repentance, that they will renounce Freemasonry. Amen. All kings, Amen. Them, they need to renounce it. Amen. That's why we need to be praying for Praise them. God. That Amen. they'll get saved, born again, spirit filled, and come publicly and say, I renounce Freemasonry. Amen. <laughs> Keep That's why we need to keep Reach praying. It. Amen. <laughs> keep praying. Because it pleases God. Because he wants them out of darkness and into right. his light. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, Proverbs 15, verse 26. 
It says, God detests, he absolutely detests the thoughts of the wicked. But those of the pure are pleasing to him. And praise be Amen. to God. Uh, uh, Roman, uh, Philippians 4, 18. It says, oh, are you ready for this one? This is where we all switch off. Never mind putting the kettle on now in this bit. Never mind going to the toilet. I know you'll all do a runner at this one. Yeah, yeah, stay with you. <laughs> are you ready for this one, Philippians 4, 18? It says, giving money <laughs> to ministries Amen. and the work of God. It says, this pleases God. Amen. God loves a cheerful Give giver. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God doesn't love a stingy giver. And by the way, pastors, uh, elders, don't use this scripture to get your flock giving. Amen. Don't use it as manipulation. Tides, amen. Or tides or anything. Because Paul addresses this and he says each one should put a sum aside to, of what they should give, who they should give to. I remember once I, I was in this meeting and Godness me, there was so much pressure to give yeah. and everything. And I said, and he actually said to me, ask God what you should give. And I took a tenor with me. I said, Lord, what shall I give it? Shall I give this tenor in? And clears the bells. God says, I want you to put a ten pound in and take nine pounds <laughs> out. <laughs> so I started, I'm giving a pound. God told me to give a pound and take the nine. <laughs> <laughs> they said, don't give to him again. <laughs> I mean, you know, we have to be obedient to God. But a lot of churches... <laughs> he stopped at Chippy. I was struck off as elder that night. <laughs> he went to put petrol in. Because <laughs> I said, well, if I put a pound here, I'm nine pound for the lottery then. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, no, we have to be, and then I've been in the opposite, where God's told me to put more in than what I was expecting to do. I mean, no, we have to be obedient to God. You know, <laughs> I mean, we have one brother, oh, praise God, we have a member of this ministry, no names mentioned, and is the bigger giver to this ministry every month. Amazing, we've been, he's been giving, I forgot, over five years now. Every month he gives faithfully. Nobody knows who he is, but he gives faithfully. I always said, what do you want us to use this money for? He said, whatever you want. I said, well, what do you want? Tracks, mission, uh, for the church, whatever you want. Never asked for anything. He never asked for a yearly statement. He said, as I give to you, I'm trusting God will use it. We have a person, no names mentioned, they give £5 a month. They want every detail. 